Welcome to my YouTube channel, One Race, Human Race, All Human. Today is Thursday, July 15th, 2021. We need a federal law that is be based upon Article 1, Section 4, Clause 1 to secure our elections. Right now, Georgia can overrule its people as they vote. So let's say they're voting for uh, United States Senator uh, Warnock and the legislature says, no, we're not going to count those votes. Uh, even though he would win with those votes, they can overturn it and say, no, you're not going to count those votes. Uh, he would lose. Whoever wins, wins the election. It must be fair. Well, Article 1, Section 4, Clause 1 says this. The time, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. But the Congress may at any time by law make or alter such regulations, except as the place of choosing senators. Number one, we need a uniform process for federal elections based on Article 1, Section 4, Clause 1 of the United States Constitution. Number two, we need under federal control an independent, impartial, nonpartisan commission of experts to count disputed votes and non-disputed votes. And three, automatic certification of winners and losers based on the totals of the undisputed votes and the disputed votes that have been resolved by the independent, impartial, nonpartisan commission of experts. That's what's needed right now in America. And now looks like in terms of whether people believe our government, they view everything through a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people who get their news, you know, from, from organizations that align with the president and who take what he says seriously. They don't really regard our government as credible or institutions as credible unless the president says they are. And, and that politicization of, of our government is a lasting legacy of, of the last four years. And I think the, the thread between what we are left with is there are people dying of COVID and they break down now along ideological lines, not age, not pre-existing condition, not gender, not where they live, but ideology. I, there's one more thing I, I have to read and I have to play for all of, you, all of you because one of the sort of lasting impressions was of Officer Goodman directing Mitt Romney away from the mob. I want to put that image up and read this excerpt from uh, Lennox and Rucker's book. Senator Mitt Romney had been more attentive than others. On January 2nd, the senator from Utah received a call from Senator Angus King, an independent from Maine, warning him about unsettling personal and specific threats. Millie had shared with King online chatter he discovered through an app on his phone called Data Miner. Mitt, you can't go back, Ann Romney told her husband. She called his Senate staff and said she feared for his safety. Mitt Romney tried to reassure her, it's the Capitol, and I'm careful, and I do have precautions and security. I'll be very, very careful, he told his wife. He said he had a responsibility to go back to Washington to certify the election. Um, on just this question of political violence, Dan Goldman, there is an undeniable fact that there is an unprecedented threat of domestic violent extremism. There are public warnings. There have been several since January. There is an undeniable level of threat facing local election officials. Gabe Sterling came out and warned that someone would get shot. And we're learning more and more about the threats facing public health officials. To Eli's point, the destruction of trust is a threat, is a menace to every institution in this country, including our national security institutions. Absolutely. Domestic violent extremism is the number one threat in this country, according to the FBI and the Department of Justice. Um, there's no question about it. And it really is white supremacy, white extremism, uh, white power movements that were behind January 6th. But I, one other thing I would add, Nicole, is, you know, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, the the result from January 6th and from the 2020 election is that all we have all of these states that are trying to change the voting laws, not only to restrict and suppress voting that has a disparate impact on minorities, but also to make it easier for their uh, elected or non-elected state officials to overturn the election. And that's what they were unable to do in 2020. And now they're targeting those issues right now. This is an existential problem for our democracy. And the result of January 6th was not to say, apparently among Republicans in particular, was not to say, okay, boy, that was too much. That went too far. We had people die. 
this is way beyond anything we're doing. No, they're doubling and tripling down, and they're trying to make it even easier to do what they failed to do this time. So we're by no means out of the woods, and that's why this legislation that is in Congress right now, the two different bills, are so important um, for Congress to pass because it's really the only check on a lot of these state uh, laws that are being changed. Jeremy Bash, you get the last word. Well, look, uh, in the military and intelligence world, we oftentimes praise people and give them awards for the fights that they took on. And I think we have to now reward people for the, for the fights they didn't take on, for not getting involved in any way in the election process. But I agree with Dan, our system is fragile. And to me, the scariest part of our constitutional architecture is that in the House of Representatives, if someone doesn't get 270 electoral votes, it goes to the House. And I think this would be a, a problem if a Democratic uh, candidate was elected and a Republican House overturned it. I would be concerned if it was a Republican candidate got elected and a Democratic House overturned it. I, I, I say that without respect to party. I think this is something that really needs to be scrutinized. We have to ensure that the House of Representatives cannot take an election from the American people. And then when you're done making sure that's not the case, you have to go and make sure that in Georgia, Brad Raffensperger, or whoever succeeds him, is able to ar be the arbiter of the results in Georgia, that in Texas, Katie Hobbs, who's been removed from, I mean, that is the rot of our election systems. The Trump wing of the Republican Party has gone state by state and has been successful in 22 states. That part of our conversation is to be continued. Dan Goldman, Jeremy Bash, thank you so much for starting us off on this really mind-blowing new reporting. Eli is sticking around. When we come back, much... So again, Article 1, Section 4, Clause 1 says, The times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. But the Congress may at any time by law make or alter such regulations except as the place of choosing senators. So number one, we need a uniform process for federal elections based on Article 1, Section 4, uh, Clause 1 of the United States Constitution. Number two, we need, under federal control, an independent, impartial, nonpartisan commission uh, of experts to count disputed votes and non-disputed votes. And three, automatic certification of winners and losers based on the totals of undisputed votes and disputed votes that have been what resolved by the independent, impartial, nonpartisan commission of experts. In other words, the Georgia legislature cannot overrule uh, legitimate bona fide votes of people in their states because they don't like who won the election. So this again is for federal elections, the presidency, House of Representatives, and the United States Senate. Uh, so a uniform process for voting in federal elections, for, for registering voters, for uniform process, for the voting itself in terms of number of days, polling places, staffing, the type of machines we use, and also tabulation of votes. There would be Again, a uniform process under federal control for disputes. There will be an independent, impartial, nonpartisan commission of experts, people with competency in voting rights and voting disputes, and they will be the ones who would decide disputes. So it will be taken out of the hands of political actors, i.e. the state legislatures, right? Automatic certification of winners and losers based on what? The total undisputed vote, votes and the disputed vote so that happened what resolved by the independent commission of experts. All right. So this is how we can save our democracy. Uh, everyone on this planet knows Earth has a right to life, liberty, pursuit, and happiness. And in democracy, whoever wins, wins the election. Okay. Whether they have red hats or no red hats. You know, whoever wins, wins. And um, God bless them. But it must be fair, transparent, and um, the will of the American people. That's democracy. Thank you for being on our YouTube channel, One Race, Human Race, All Human. Today is Thursday, July 15th, 2021. God bless you.